Hey guys, I'm Desho and I'm here bringing you some magic and today we're going to be going over Enter the Dracomancer or otherwise known as the Dragon Deck or the Devour Deck and there are a couple of ways to really run this one and I chose this way not actually I'm pretty sure that this is the best way to run it because I, I usually like to say not really sure if this is the best way but I played a bunch of games with it this morning the other way and I really think that there are only two viable ways. I guess you could go somewhere in the, in the middle and um, that might work too but and this morning I was trying to run it as a red green deck basically a red green devour deck with some dragons and the problem with that is it's just not powerful enough you don't have any removal and you really have to get the perfect draw because the problem with running it that way is you have four stages to your game stage number one is cast a bunch of little creatures so that's gonna be either these thalids or uh, dragon fodder Step number two is going. Stage number two is going to be ramping, so that's going to be either by playing Dragon Speaker Shamans or Cultivates. And um, one of the main issues with that is if these guys die, then that completely destroys your your stage number two, and then they're just going to kill you before you can even do anything. Um, stage number three is going to be to um, to play a dragon or a, a big creature, and then devour up all your little guys. And then stage number four is either you attack them or you souls fire, and you can usually kill them in one one or two turns. But the main issue with that strategy is if your creature in stage number three just gets unsummoned or path to exiled, then your entire game plan has been ruined or doom bladed. Um, so almost all the decks can deal with it, and your entire game plan has been negated, and then you just lose. So unless you're playing against pack instinct or burn or it could be pacified as well and that, that usually gets it done um, so unless you're playing against burn or um, or or uh, not passing it, hunter strength then you're gonna be in really bad shape so that's why I don't like to run that deck it's just not consistent enough it's too slow and uh, it it's not powerful enough even so that's the reason why I guess it's probably powerful enough if your opponent would leave you alone but it's it's too slow and inconsistent to even uh, even get there, especially when you may, your major win condition can just be um, disrupted pretty easily. So that's why I don't like running it that way. And uh, I decided instead to run it this way, which uh, it, I basically took the Devour theme out of the deck. That's why all these Stalids are in the sideboard. Not sure if it's better to just run four Dragon Fodder or four um, Tuka Tuka Thalid, but I mean it doesn't really matter because these are your only two drops anyway. So uh, it, it's either you only run two drops or only run one drops. So it doesn't really matter, and the cards do basically the same thing. But um, I'm running these cards not to f um, dragon fodder them and toss them up to a bigger dragon later, but I'm really just running them to chump block, to double block, to deter people from block from attacking early in the game. So th that's basically why, well, these guys, why these guys are in there. Maybe they'll join in with a Borderland Ranger and. Uh, knock down a champion of the parish or something like that um, so I opted to run all three colors because black has the powerful spells red and green have the more synergistic spells and the spells that you need so um, I decided to toss in black obviously you're gonna want to run all these terramorphic expanses uh, Banefire just I mean they gave us a, they gave us a good card in this deck so that's a surprise they did put four dragon speaker shamans in which means that you can get your deck to be pretty similar and do pretty much the same thing every time which is just ramp on turn three because you have all these and all the cultivates and borderland ranger isn't ramp but it will get you your mana and then you'll be able to cast your dragons on time um, as opposed to early but you're going to be one of the running this dragon speaker shaman i've got nine mountains in here but that's deceivingly low because there are also cultivates and borderland rangers which uh, which will get you there. I've got John Battle Mage. Making saplings is a really good way to slow down your opponent. You just jump block every turn. And uh, I don't think I've actually ever activated the top ability. Three Borderland Rangers. You just toss this guy this guy away like at the second you can. You throw him under the bus. But he also does um, help you get to your higher land drops because I'm only running 24 land in this deck. And I mean, there's these guys in the land cycler, so that's why it's okay. But um, it is a pretty high drop centric deck as you can see 10 plus at 6 but anyway Jun Charm you're only sweepers you only get two of them and uh, they're not very good but I mean I mean it's it's actually a pretty good sweeper in general 
but it's not as efficient as something like Flagstorm or Pyroclasm, where this one costs one more mana, but it does give you some options. You never know, exiling a graveyard might come in handy against zombies at some point, just like sweep their board and then and then exile it. I don't know, if you have two gen charms, I've had that before, but it's not that common. Consume Strength, hopefully you can use to gain yourself a little advantage early on. Um, if not, it's just used as a removal spell. Unfortunately, the main issue that I find with this deck is they didn't spread out the the spells like they didn't give us doom blades why didn't they put doom blade in this deck instead of like maelstrom pulse or something i know they wanted to give us multicolored cards but uh, give us terminate why didn't you just give this deck four terminate then it would have been so much better but instead you have to wait till three to play any of your high impact spells and then speaking of high impact spells you have maelstrom pulse obviously it's a really powerful card so uh you should be running it if you're going to be running black then I've got four Cultivates. You really need these to smooth out your mana draws. There's only four Swamps in the deck, um, but there's a ton of ways to find them, so that's why that's why it kind of works out. Spellbreaker Behemoth, Gigantic Bro, that you can just play. His, his ability is relevant only against the blue deck, obviously, but you can still play him as a 5-5 five, five for four, and uh, that's why he's in the deck. He's just there as a giant stop sign. You play him out, and your opponent can't really attack anymore. Bloodbraid Elf is obviously just a really powerful card, and uh, it only costs 4 mana. You usually don't get too much value out of the body, but Gavin Cascade and just throwing a dude out there seems to be working out pretty well. Ogre Battle Driver is really interesting. It's obviously way more in place. Sorry about that. Um, it's way more in place in the... Uh, token version of the deck where you can just be like dragon fodder i had this one turn earlier where i had a little phallid guy out and this ogre battle driver and that's how i started the turn then i played a dragon fodder so those got both got plus three plus one and then i played one of the uh one of the devour guys ate up my phallid dude and then he spat out a sapling token who also got plus two plus oh and then my dragon also got plus two plus oh in haste and I just swung in for like 20 damage or something like that. It was crazy. Hey, get back in there. I did not say you could leave the deck. Um, anyway, so he's okay. He's not he's not that good in this deck. But it's nice to give something like Dragon Broodmother, um, Flame Blast Dragon. It's nice to give those guys haste. Um, other than that, he's kind of just a 3-3. And, I mean, maybe I really should be playing this Gorger Worm over him just as a 5-5. But anyway, let's move on to the next card. Broodmate Dragon. One of those finishers in this deck. Obviously, combos really well with the Battle Driver, but, I mean, it's just a finisher. You need some finishers if you want to win the game. This thing helps you get your swamps, and if you have too many lands, which often is the case, then you can just play them as a 5-1 haste. Dragon Broodmother is the only Devourer card in the deck. I mean, obviously, this card is just incredibly powerful. It costs 6 mana to play, but at the beginning of each upkeep, so that means your upkeep and your opponent's upkeep you get uh, a 1-1 one, one that can devour things. You don't necessarily need to devour them, you can just have 1-1s one, for 1, or you can just um, make one on their turn, that's a 1-1, one, one, and then the one on your turn devours yours, and you know, you can get pretty big creatures that way. Dragon Lair Spider is a 5-6 reach, which surprisingly, almost nothing in the format can get past. Even Angelic Overseers, when they're not pumped, can't attack into this thing. And whenever they play a spell, you just get a 1-1. One, one. Like, Okay, I, I can definitely accept that. It's one of the best stabilizing spells in the format, and uh, it's really powerful. If you haven't tried it, then you should. Flame Blast Dragon, old card, very good, very powerful, not really much to talk about. Volcanic Dragon's okay, but he is a dragon, so he gets spit out earlier by the uh, Dragon Master Outcast, and uh, he only costs 4 mana that way, and he's a 4 4 Flying Haste, so he does stuff. This thing is a 7 7 Flying Haste. Doesn't really do much else than other than that, but yeah, form of the dragon, really powerful card. It turns you into a dragon basically, and uh, a lot of the time they your opponent can't win. I I did this once and I almost gave away the game um, because I had him dead, but then I played a dr but then he played a draining whelk and I almost lost, but I did leave my creature back to block, so that was lucky. And then mm -hmm. lastly, we have Hellkite Overlord. This card is just. Uh, gigantic dragon that's basically what the deck is just gigantic dragons and ways to get there so now let's talk about the cards that didn't make the cut so this thalad i just didn't have enough slots to um spend all of the uh, little guys on so that's that's why that was the case 
Um, then these two things I just didn't think were that powerful. Dragon's Breath, Dragon's Fangs. Artifact mutation, I don't I don't know. I mean like <laughs> there aren't that many artifacts in the format. Alright, let's move on to Soul's Fire. This card is okay, but um, it really is sort of like combo-y, and I tried to take all of the like random combo elements out of this deck. And I mean, when you're playing the black removal, you don't really need more three drop removal. But when you are playing the Devour deck, you just play Predator Dragon and this thing, and you kill them in two turns. Like Predator Dragon attacks, then attacks again the next turn, and then you soul fight, soul fight them. And it's really ridiculous. This guy's okay in the Devour version, but without it, you definitely don't want to be running it. Um, dragons are big enough anyway. I don't know why this card was ever printed, but whatever. This guy could be in the deck, but he's just not. This thing is just way worse than Soul's Fire. Um, so, I don't really know why why anyone would play it. You can run this guy if you want, but I only wanted the other cycling guys so that I can get swamps with it. Predator Dragon does cost triple red, and that's why it's not in the deck. Um, it's too hard to cast all the time. Sometimes you can cast it, but just uh, other times it's really, really difficult to cast, and I'm not a fan. Dragon Roost takes way too long to do anything. Um, this thing is just so overcosted. Sometimes it'll just win you the game. Actually, most of the time it'll just win you the game. But you have to already have a dragon in it, and I'm hoping that the dragons are going to win by themselves. And then there's just this giant worm that you don't really need. So, that is the deck. Um, play some games with it, not really expecting to win any, because I think that this is the worst deck in the game by a significant margin. Maybe the Demir deck is, is as bad, but I'm not sure. So, uh, we'll see you in the games. Bye.